What's up, internet? My name is Kyle, back with another episode about cameras, tech, and all that good stuff. Today, we are gonna talk about Lightroom Mobile and the different tips and tricks that I do to edit faster and easier. All right, so we've done a Lightroom mobile video before and you guys said that the screen was a little too small. What I'm gonna try and do today is record my entire screen, use landscape mode so it takes up the whole screen and then do what I need to do. Am I recording? Yes, I am. Okay, so let's open up Lightroom mobile and get to it. Okay, so tip number one is you can see in Lightroom what is affecting the picture as far as whites, blacks, highlights, and shadows. So to start, we're on the edit panel, which you see on the top right here, the little sliders. So once you got that open, we're gonna go to light. And then these are the different adjustments that I've made so far. And what you can do is if I hold down whites with one finger, and then hold down the photo with my other finger. So I got my pointer finger on whites and then my thumb on the photo. If I move down whites, you see there's nothing on the screen. So you don't see anything being blown out. If I move whites up and I keep going up and up and up and up, boom, right there, I'm at, I'm at plus 28 on whites. You see that there are now blown out parts of the picture. I'm gonna let my thumb go and you'll see and press back down, oh, there we go. And you'll see that there are blown out points and you can kind of let go and see what's going on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down whites again, hold down the photo, and then I'm gonna go down until right about there. So about 16, plus 16 on whites, nothing is blown out. You can also do that for highlights so I'm gonna hold down highlights with one finger, hold the photo down with another, and then as you see, as soon as I come up past about 60, you can see that some of the photo is blown out. Now, I should obviously try and take a better photo and not blow out so many highlights, but um, this is a little bit what Lightroom is all about. So I'll go down to about negative 68. You can see a couple specks there, but that's okay. And I let go and now my highlights are all good. So that's a cool little feature where you can hold down a slider, hold down the photo, and then use the slider and just see what it's affecting and what gets blown out and what doesn't. Okay, so tip number two, uh, we're actually gonna get out of this photo. Uh, I'm gonna go back by hitting the top left, and then it's the people tab, which is on the left, which I've never really used before, but as I was trying to look for what to talk to you guys about today, it's actually pretty interesting. So I'm gonna hit the people tab and then right away, you see there's all these different people. I shot a wedding not too long ago um, that all these people are from. So if I scroll down, um, well actually if I go up to the top left, uh, this is my cousin Jessica. She's in 198 photos. So I'm gonna tap on her and then you'll see all of the photos that she is in, which is actually kind of cool if you're looking for a specific person specific photo or something like that, you can look at this people tab, scroll through and be like, oh, hey, what about that guy's brother? And what photos is he in? And let's do him, he has 42 photos. And these are all of the photos that I took that he is in. And Lightroom is just kind of figuring that out with uh, facial recognition, I guess. So I think that's pretty cool. Obviously, if I go back here, um, there's a picture of me up here. So I have 116 photos where it recognized that version of my face. And then if I scroll down, I believe I'm down here, yeah, with uh, sunglasses on and there's only six photos. So it's like, obviously it's gonna be different depending on sunglasses and if you're in focus or not. But it's kind of cool to see if you can find people pretty quickly throughout all of your photos, which is pretty nice. Okay, so let's get out of people and go to just all photos again. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is copying and pasting settings. So in your editing workflow, you obviously don't want to individually um, adjust every single photo, especially if a photo that you just edited 
is very similar to the next photo that you're gonna edit. So let's go back to this picture of Meg with the sunset. And if I hit the little dots in the top right hand corner, I'll hit that and you have an option to copy settings. And then it's gonna ask you, oh, what settings do you wanna copy? You can do everything or you can just do certain things. So I'm gonna actually go to selective edits, uncheck that and make sure, whoops, I'll go back to the dots, copy settings, make sure um, selective edits is one of those that you probably don't wanna copy over because um, if it's a similar photo, like it's the same scene, but a different view, there's probably not that little brush stroke that you want there in the next photo. So selective edits, I recommend not copying over, but the basic sliders, you know, contrast, exposure, all of that stuff, it, it, those are probably the ones you wanna copy over. So you do copy, hit okay, and then when you swipe to the next photo, I'll go back up to the dots, do paste settings, and boom, it's gonna throw the settings from the last photo onto that photo. Now you can do this even faster with the previous button, which on the right hand side is those two circles and the arrow. So if I swipe right, this is another photo, kind of the same scene, actually it is the same scene. I'm just gonna hit the two circles with the arrow button. It says apply from previous photo. I'm gonna say all, and then boom, it just applies everything. So that's, I think that's a lot quicker, but you have to copy the settings first to do that. So the difference between the two is copy settings, you can individually select stuff, and then um, with the previous button, you can either do all or just adjustments. So copy settings has a little more flexibility. Okay, and um, not sure if you guys follow my Instagram, but I talked about it on there. I actually created my first preset ever, which is very weird because I've never used presets, and I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it's definitely got my intrigue going, but I created one and I called it Sunburst. So I, I fully edited this photo. I posted it on Instagram the other day, and in looking to look at stuff for this video, I was like, hmm, why don't I try this? So how you do it is once you have edited a photo, you come up to the circles in the top right, or the dots, and there's a create preset button. So you go to create preset, and then you can choose what you want to include in the preset or what you want to exclude from the preset. And then you can name it up here. So I've already done this, so I'm just gonna exit out and go back and I'm going to go to a photo that I want to apply it to. So let's go to this one. No editing has been done on this photo at all. So if I go up to the preset button, which is the button below the slider, so it's the two circles that kind of intertwine. So I'm gonna click that. And then there are presets that are in Lightroom already. If you didn't know that, there are default presets, but I'm gonna go down to what I created, which, oh, I hit a button. I'm gonna go down to the one I created, which is called Sunfire. Couldn't think of another name for it. It's a sunset kind of preset, so I went with it. I'll click Sunfire, hit Done, and then boom, it's applied. And then to see it before, you hold down the photo, and then to see it after, I let go, and that's what it looks like before, after. So yeah, it's pretty cool. You can make a preset in like two seconds, and. I don't know why I've never looked into that. I guess I'm not not a big expert on Lightroom, but I've been trying to use it more and more. I mean, I've been editing photos in it for probably two years now, but I've never made a preset, which is pretty crazy. But now I have a preset and I'll probably make more. Okay, the final tip tricks that I'll talk to you guys about is organization, which I'm gonna do an overhaul tonight on my albums and stuff like that but I just wanna show you the different features in mobile that you can use. So this is what Lightroom looks like when I open it up. For the first time, I don't do anything. So I'm on all photos. If I scroll through, you'll see all of the photos that I've taken and they're all pretty big. So if you go up to the little filter icon, um, there's a bunch of different things you can filter from. So this kind of helps with your organization or when you're looking for something specific. So you can use people, which I don't think works as well as going directly over to the people tab we talked about earlier, but you can do camera. So like I've taken some photos with my iPhone and I've imported them in here. And then I have my Sony a6000 and then I have some from my drone. So it literally lists out 
the camera or whatever device you use to take the photos and you can sort by that. So if you take a lot with your phone, but you wanna edit them in Lightroom, you can use that and you can sort by that, which is really cool. So if I do iPhone, you'll see some pictures. Look at this picture I took in Canada on my iPhone. Pretty freaking crazy. Did I edit this? Yeah, I did, but that's besides the point. Anyway, let's go back to the filters. So if I filter, do camera, uncheck iPhone, now I have everything, iPhone 6000 and drone. So I think that's really useful. Then if you go up to the dots and you go to segmentation, this is where it gets interesting. So I always have a really hard time finding a picture that I took forever ago or just finding pictures in general. I'm the worst. I am so disorganized with my photos. Anyway, I digress. I'm, I'm gonna work on that. So if you go to segmentation, you can then choose which day, which month, which year Lightroom organizes your photos. So I've been doing, or what I'm going to do is by days. So once I do days, boom, you'll see September 22nd, October 17th, September 18th, September 16th. And this is on import. So it's not the day you took it, but it's the day of import. Like these photos up top of October 17th, I brought them in Lightroom that day but I took those in September. But it's still, if you're consistent, take the photos, import them, you can know basically you know, when they were taken and then I, that just helps when you're looking for stuff, it really does. So that's segmentation and then if you also hit the top dots, top right hand corner, hit the three dots, you can then do view options which as a YouTuber and somebody that wants to, you know, show side by sides of photos and stuff like that, this is really helpful. So if I go to EXIF info, you can see it changes right there. Now I see the aperture value, the shutter speed, the ISO value, and it shows me that in the thumbnail, which is super cool. I, I, I never knew that I could do this. So now it's like, if I'm doing a comparison, of a lens and I'm like, it's just it's just super cool. I love that I can do that. I'll go back to the three dots, go to view options, and this is cool too. You can change the thumbnail size. So there's small, normal, large, and I think that is super helpful. I kind of like seeing them large and sorted by date and with the EXIF data on there. I think that's that's awesome, that's amazing. Now I feel like it's a little more sorted. I do like the artistic look of when you go in Lightroom and all your photos are gigantic and they're all kind of meshed together. But from an organization standpoint, these filters and the view mode and the segmentation helps so much. Dude, I am talking way too fast. Oh my God, I'm dying. So yeah, that's basically kind of what I wanted to talk about today in Lightroom. I hope this was helpful. I really liked making this video. I wanna make more Lightroom videos and more of the tics, tips and tricks videos. I don't know, I guess because I watch videos like this and I like making them. So yeah, let me know if you guys like this video. Let me know what I can improve on, what I can do differently. I tried to do it a little different than the last one, so hopefully that worked out. But yeah, let me know, just let me know. Okay guys, I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great day, whatever day it is. I don't know why I'm ending the video differently than I normally do. I will see you guys in the next episode. Later.